greetings. So this video is going to take a look at the idea of vectors being described from the perspective of a unit vector notation. Let's say you have a vector, I'll call it vector A. How can you denote that vector? You can either denote it in a polar notation or a unit vector notation. This video, as I've said, is going to end up looking at things from the perspective of a unit vector notation. To do this process, we're going to need the x component and the y component of the vector, which is not actually what's being shown here, because in fact, components have positive and negative signs associated with them. This, to be a component, would actually be minus 10.4. This, in fact, is the magnitude of the um, x component, but not a big deal. Um, we can still work with this. Uh, math classes uh, present this kind of information as an ordered pair. You will never do this in physics. To understand what you will do, you need to think about what's actually going on here. What you're doing is you are taking a vector in the minus x direction, whose magnitude is 10.4, and you're adding it to a vector in the plus y direction, whose magnitude is 6. And that graphical vector addition is going to end up giving you vector A. Here is that operation written out in longhand. And the challenge is, is to come up with a way of identifying the direction part of these two vectors mathematically. To accommodate that need in the y direction, the clever thing that mathematicians have done has been to identify or define a vector in the y direction whose magnitude is 1, They've given it a special symbol. They've defined it as J with a hat over it. They call that a unit vector in the y direction. So if I need a vector whose magnitude is 6 units long and it's in the y direction, I simply take the scalar 6 and multiply it by J, and voila! I have a vector whose magnitude is 6 in the y direction. The unit vector in the x direction is an i with a hat over it. So if I need a vector in the minus x direction whose magnitude is 10.6, I would take minus i hat and I would multiply it by the scalar 10.6. I would probably then take the negative sign and pull it out in front because it tends to get lost inside here. And I would end up with this vector whose magnitude would be 10.6 and whose direction would be in the negative x direction. And so that vector sum that we were talking about ends up looking like this. Here's the magnitude, 10.6. Um, um, the negative sign, which was attached to the i, gets pulled out in front. This now becomes the component, 10.6 minus 10.6 is the component, uh, plus 6j. Here is the one vector, here is the second vector. You add the two together, doink, and you now have a characterized in the unit vector notation. Some uh, minor bits of amusement. If you were given this vector and you were asked to graph it, you take the component, minus 10.6, so you go across in the x direction, minus x direction. You take uh, the 6 and you go up, and you graph out A. Uh, 1.5a, you basically just take each of the components and multiply by 1.5. That's going to give you minus 15.9 and 9, and here is your vector 1.5a. Minus a is just flipping this vector over, which is going to bring it down here like so, which essentially is just going to change the sign of each of the components, which is like multiplying by minus 1. And so you have plus 10.6 and minus 6, there is minus a. So this is the way that you could receive information about a given vector. You could be given the magnitude of the components, you could be given the whole magnitude and the angle. Um, as you have probably run into in earlier videos, if you were given the magnitude and the angle, you would use a polar notation to identify and characterize the vector. If you were given the magnitudes or the uh, magnitude of the components, you would use the unit vector notation to characterize the vector. And that's it.